the retrofit applications are going to sound uh, like the new ones because that's basically where we're headed. So let's look at water source heat pumps. Um, water source heat pumps, I said, is a no-brainer. I said, we should stop the seminar and get in the car and go find all these jobs and change them out. I really believe that. I really believe that strongly because another thing we didn't mention to you, these old non-condensing boilers have fairly complex controls on them. I do away with all that stuff and get rid of the three-way valves and get rid of the blending valves. I just stick to condensate condensing more in there. I don't care how cold the water is. So you eliminate a bunch of controls and you eliminate a bunch of maintenance costs. That water source heat pump job is always condensing, always at part load, and most important to you on a retrofit, quick payback. We've seen paybacks less than two years. We've seen people claim that the paybacks are less than two years because they had maintenance issues and the maintenance issues were eliminated. The maintenance issues were eliminated because of this. And that's a huge number that you can't really plug in on your payback, but it very well may be the driving force. We also mentioned to you the outdoor reset schedules. And we see a lot of situations where people are having maintenance issues with older boilers. Say you say you got three boilers. You got three boilers in a situation, and all three have outdoor air reset, all three non-condensing. You got huge maintenance issues. One simple approach to that would be, and this works really well, it's kind of what we call a, a mixture of these things or hybrid, is we, we would take those three boilers and take out one boiler only and replace that one boiler with a condensing boiler. The idea behind the condensing boiler is we're going to run it as core lead boiler condensing all the time. So the return water temperature below 130, let it rip. Let it run all the time. The efficiencies go way up. The only time we're going to turn on the two older boilers, which are in parallel, is any time the outside air is cold on your reset schedule and the return water temperature is above 130. And they won't run that much. They will not run that much. But they, when they do run, they'll be safe and you stop the maintenance issues because you don't rain in them anymore. Great application. Only buying one boiler out of the three, and you got the two, you got the other two for standby, is perfect. And it cuts the dollars way right down. The, the payback on this is, is very quick. I think you should strongly consider, you should strongly consider looking at that. Uh, this hybrid boiler thing I just mentioned to you, here's some guidelines on how you might do that. But the message again is you're reducing the first cost. You're putting a condenser boiler in running as you leave boiler about all the time, and your paybacks are just awesome. And this is some basic guidelines, kind of rule of thumbs, how you might want to approach that. If you get a situation like that, get a vendor who understands this and talk to them because uh, a lot of times uh, customers will say, let's change all my boilers. Don't have enough money. It would be nice to change all three, but you don't. So now you can VE a value engineer it down to where you're just changing one of the three boilers out, yet you're still getting the vast majority of the savings because that condensing boiler runs as the lead boiler. It runs all the time. And that's a real good way to save a job that's in trouble with money on first cost and still give the owner a great application and a great, great project. Uh, one last project I like to look at, and some of you young kids may have never seen these things, and there's not many of them left, but I think it's an educational piece, it's what we call a dual temp system. A uh, dual temp system basically, and I'll show you a picture next, you had one set of pipes, and you heated and cooled with the same set of pipes. So here's what, here's what it looks like, a real simple method. Uh, you got two, you got, you got a two pipe system, heat and cool. In other words, you turn the boiler on, the chillers off, and you can heat. You turn the, or off, you turn the chiller on, you can cool. So the same fan coil, the same heat exchanger, the same two-way valve is going to be sitting there doing heating or cooling as required when that when it comes on. So the message is we got to make sure that we do that, and we got to make sure that we have have fun with that. So let's see where we're going. So basically, if the boiler is running, and the boiler is at a, what 130, 140 degrees, so it doesn't condense for these old non-condensing boilers. How quick can you change it over from heating to cooling? I was in a seminar yesterday, and a gentleman had one of these. He told me it took him a week. He said, started laughing. I can probably do it two or three days. But when you go from heating at 140, 150 degrees over the chill water, you can't just take that 140 degree water and dump it in your chill. It's going to blow the charge. Now, if you've got two-way valves and blending valves and a way to do it, or sit there by hand and gradually do it, you can do it faster. But if you don't have the sophisticated blending valves, which these old jobs probably did not, it's going to take a long time. 
bottom line is you don't want to do that. Going the other way, you don't want to put 45 degree water, 55 degree water in non-condensing boils. You're going to make them rain in the boils. You're going to tear them up. So you've got a huge waiting time. Condensing boils work great here because if you had a condensing bore and you were going to go over the chill water, for example, you can let condensed water run on down to 50 to 60, 70 degrees before you change over. So your wait time is insignificant. Going from chill water back to the boiler, turn the chiller off and turn the boiler on. Who cares if it's 45 degree water going to the boiler? The boiler is just more efficient. So if you got one of these, it's a great retrofit, real simple thing. It probably is going to save a lot of maintenance problems. Have a great day. Thank you very much.